Okay, hey everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Uh, we're doing something a little different than we normally do, or what we have been doing, I should say. I'm here with uh, my mules, Kate and Alice. We're hooked to the log wagon, and this job, y'all, has been mostly a log wagon job, mainly because we got half-mile skids out to the main deck at the road out there. And as you can see, uh, we've been cutting timber down through here here's a beach top that we had and right over there is a white oak and another red oak over in there and y'all can just kind of see what we've been doing uh but what we're going to do is skid the rest of this timber we got about two wagon loads left right down in here and i wanted to just get some some video of us skidding uh, i'm gonna try to do the best i can i am by myself and uh, my battery ain't all that great i am getting some more batteries though so <laughs> Hopefully soon we'll have some better ways to video. Uh, but I wanted to get a little bit of footage of us skidding logs up here to the wagon and then a little bit of us cross hauling. We have been using a skid steer to load with. We've been setting the logs, you know, staging the logs in a certain spot and then just using a skid steer to load. The problem with that is, I mean, y'all can see down here, you know, it's pretty tight with all these trees in here and whatnot. And especially like going back out, I cut me a little road in here. And then the main road is right out there. It goes back up the hill. Uh, it gets kind of tight in here, y'all. Especially when you got 20, 30 logs, you know, to pile up. Uh, but that's what we've been doing. It's been staging the logs and then using skid loader to load them on the log wagon. So instead of doing that the last day or so, well, yesterday and then today, uh, I've been just skidding them with the mules and doing one wagon load at a time we'll load the wagon and then go the road come back load the wagon go the road you know and whatnot so to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing uh it keeps the logs from getting bunched up in one spot and makes best use of our room and you know loading this wagon in the woods is completely different than loading the wagon out in the wide open it's a big difference you know right here we're on a hill i don't know how well y'all be able to see it but you know it slopes going uphill that way uh you definitely don't want to try to load the wagon going across you know like this across the hill you don't want to do that because you're either going to be pulling uphill trying to load or pulling downhill and then the logs won't hardly stop when they hit the blocks on the wagon you turn the wagon over and actually i turned the wagon over yesterday and i'll tell y'all why let me explain this to you right quick uh y'all see these blocks right here See these blocks, you know, they, they slide on the wagon and this chain right here, my block chain, see how it connects right in there? It holds that block in place, y'all. And uh, what we did yesterday is we loaded a big beach on here and normally you want your blocks to be kind of in the middle like that one is. For your first log or two, you want them to stay right there where they're at. And then when you come up with your third log, then right before you pull on it with the mules you can unchain your blocks and slide them out to the outside that way when you pull the third log up on it'll scoot all your logs over at one time and you got a better balanced load what we did yesterday i loaded a beach and then loaded a small red oak right behind it and i undid my blocks too soon and that beach rolled over and it was you know big it rolled over to the other side of the wagon and tipped the wagon on its side and it was just enough to make the wagon turn over. So it dumped my logs off and then I had to take the mules, unhook them, come bring them back around here on this side, turn the wagon back over and then bring the logs back around and reload them. And that took me 45 minutes extra time than what it should have. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of little tricks to this wagon. It's a very productive way of, of mule logging, horse logging. It's very productive y'all, but at the same time, there's a lot of little tricks to this thing. And until you learn them, it can be a headache. Uh, so. That's why, I, you know, not only to keep my deck from getting crowded in the woods here, instead of stacking a bunch of logs and then using a skid loader, I wanted to get more proficient at cross hauling. And, you know, also not getting a jumbled up mess in here with a bunch of logs. So anyway, y'all bear with me and uh, we'll see what we can do. All of them. All of them. All of them. Whoa. <clears throat> yep. 
you little wireless GK. Wireless GK. Yep. Easy. Easy. Alright. Get over that log, Alice. Alice, get over that log. Whoa. Ease up just a little. Just a little. Just a little. Little. Whoop. Good enough. Yeah. Maybe just a tad more. Just a tad. Give me just a little bit, Alice. Alice. Whoop. Now, let's see how that looks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, let me get my bed chain. Get it over here. Hopefully, y'all can see that. And my peavy. Swells at the back. Hall tune. There's my bed chain. All right, that's pretty straight log, so we'll go right in the middle. Put my peavy right back here. All right, okay, Dal. Easy, easy, yep. Oh, whoa. <clears throat> They're starting to learn this wagon, y'all. They're learning when to turn and when to stop. Whoa, all that good mess. Now I've got my tones profiled, like Jeff's, Jeff Fergie. My tones just set in there and I pull off of it. Maybe y'all can see that. That keeps you from having to have extra equipment and all that mess. I tell you what, I don't want that log to go no further forward. And that taper is down this way. I definitely don't want it going no further forward. The taper is down here on this end. We're downhill too, so I definitely don't want it to go downhill. So I'm gonna adjust my cross haul about three inches to the to that side. And that should stop it from from going downhill. I hope. Probably need to move that. Okay. Whoa! Let's go get another one. All right, come up. Easy now, walk slow. Oh. All right, y'all get in there. Get in there, Kate. Okay. You can do it. Get in there, Al. Whoop. 
Whoa. Oh, me. Oh. Whoop, easy. Easy. Whoa. Whoa. Back a little. Back a little. Back. Whoa. Now y'all, I want to take a minute just to tell you something about setting these tongs. For those of you that might try to log a little. The easiest way that I found to set them is just like this. At like, if you're on this side of the log and the mules is over that way just a little bit, set them, set your top uh, tongue here. The one that's on the top hill side, set it up here. If they're on that side, put it on the left side at the top. If they're on that side, put it on that side at the top. That'll help get you a better set. All right, easy. Whoa. Now y'all, it's easier for me to let them go on their own through a bunch of brush and crap like that you know this is a this is a tree that dom has cut a while back and it wasn't no good y'all can see it's holler and doty instead of me trying to run behind them and stay up with them you know and try to get through that mess it's easier for me just to let them go on their own they know where they're going all right kate alice They'll follow this trail, you know, that they've already made. It don't take them long to figure it out. You little. All right, now, haul. Oh, uh -huh. Oh. I believe that's far enough, I think. Let me look. Now, this is a bigger log. And you always want to put your big ones on the outside, small ones in the middle. So... I left it over this way, away from the wagon far enough that we can go right down here. Or I may just go back and get another one of them. I'll probably, I'll probably just get another one of them. Uh, just a little bit smaller. Back up, back. Oh, all right now, oh, oh. oh. Easy. It's all right. It's just a wagon. Easy, Kate. Kate, easy. Ain't like you ain't never seen a log before. You little. Whoop, Kate. You can't go up in that tree like that. Now, gee. All right, stand up. Easy. Whoa. Now, y'all, I want to talk about something that a lot of people likes to make a big deal out of for nothing. I'm just gonna go and stop the haters right now. Cause I get tired of dealing with this crap. You always gonna have people that's gonna talk about them single trees banging them in the hills. Okay, if they walk too fast, the way I got them hitched right now, yeah, they're gonna bang them in the hills because they're kicking them up too high. These single trees are made out of wood and they're real, real light. I'm dragging a pair of tongs that's heavier than both of them single trees combined. If them mules will walk slow and walk right, them single trees won't bang them in the hill. And it's my job to make sure that they walk right. Now, will it hurt them if it does bang them in the hills? Yes. And you need to have a little bit of common sense about your hill chains and how far out you got them set. But too often, more times than not, people will comment that ain't even got a pair of mules or a pair of horses about having their dog on single trees hooked too short and that we need to let them out or we need to take them loose or this and that. And I'm telling you right now, y'all, look how far my skids are. There's a wagon, there's a tree. It ain't even 20 yards. I don't have time to be sitting here unhooking and hooking heel chains to get to and from the tree. That would cost me too much time. So I just wanna to explain to y'all why I do what I do. If they walk right, them single trees won't hit them. And y'all keep an eye on it and you'll see. All right, Kate, Alice, stand up. Easy. Now see how them single trees stay off of them? 
if they'll walk right, the single tree won't bang their heels. And right about how they're walking is how I like for them to move. I don't like for them to get fast. Easy. Easy. Go ahead. Whoa. All right, now I gotta turn them around. Got that tree out. Now, gee. Yep. Get around. Whoop. Yep. 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 Whoop. Yep. Yep. Whoop. Back up. Back up. Back. Back. Now, this is the reason why. Back up. This is one of the reasons why I like stretchers and wood single trees because they're light and you're going to have to manhandle them to get them around here to where you're going to hook up at. And if you got a big old steel double tree, it gets mighty heavy. Back up. Whoa. A little bit more. Back up. Whoa, that'll do. Now, as I've told y'all in the past, whoa, pulling them out away from each other like this is dangerous because you'll go to pull it sideways and that log will still be hooked to that log and you'll pull it right into your daggum calves and it'll hurt you, you know, could break your feet, break your leg. You know, and it ain't their fault when it happens. Whoa. All right, ease up, Alice Kate. Easy. Gee, little. Whoa. Some people say, is that one of you even use a stretcher? I want to just use a double tree. Well, part of it is tradition because of me living here in Tennessee. That's part of it. And then the other part of it is is the uh, uh, the usefulness of it. The usefulness of it is, y'all, is that they can pull off of that chain that comes back to a swivel that hooks to my tongs. It V's back to that chain. You don't get quite as much of this motion going. If one mule gets too far ahead, you got a little bit of swing, but once they get out about 25% in front, that mule starts getting more load. And it gives this other mule time to catch up and also it will discourage that mule from getting too far ahead so that's the main reason i like them other than the fact that they're light you know you know it is hooked kind of long yeah i know because of the tongs and the chain and all that and the shorter you can get your load the more lift you're going to get that is true but in this case with those tongs having two points of contact you're still going to get plenty of lift and it ain't a big deal and I just found that using stretchers and tongs is what works best for me and my mule. If you're a mule logger or a horse logger, by all means, use what works best for you and your horses or your mule. All right, Kate, Alice. Easy. All right. Whoa. A uh, little bit. Whoop, a little bit. Little. Whoop. A little more. Whoop. That'll glue. Okay, now maybe y'all can see what I've done here. See how I put my big log out here and then brought them up here, skid this one up? Because you want your small log in the middle, your big logs on the outside. That makes, when you go up with your pyramid of logs, it'll give something for that. When them top logs roll over, it'll give kind of a pocket for it to set in. It'll make more sense to you here in a minute. All right. Back just a little. Back a little. Back a little. Whoa. All right. A 
Now, first thing we gotta do is reset our chains. We'll pull it back across. All right, what you hanging on there, boss? Now our black chain is what we call a bed chain. It's what goes underneath the log. This gold color chain is a cross haul chain. That's what we hook the mules to. See, so that's why I'm gonna take my bed chain first. I'm gonna lay it right here, just like that. Alrighty. Now, I get up here where I can roll my log here. Now, got that on there. Oop. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my cross all chain to start with. Pull my bed chain, find the center. See, can y'all see that? How I found center, see how it makes a V? It goes under the log, makes a V. Now I've got my I've got my cross haul chain hooked to that. Does that make sense? See how the bed chain comes under and over the top? And then you got a single point of contact that the mules are gonna hook to. And that's what we're gonna do right now. <clears throat> Alright, whoop, 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 whoop. Gee. Gee, Alice, you keep. Well, you keep. Yep. All right, you do it. Yep. That's good. Go ahead. It's all right, it's just a stick. Yep. Yep. Don't get in a hurry. All right, now haul. Whoa, I'll get that out of your way, Kate. Now they help me, and I help them. That's the name of the game. We help each other. They can't see what I see, and sometimes I can't see what they can see. Back a little. You back. Whoa. All right, let's get all the slack out of our chain. And we got our tongs hooked. Let me take one more second and just look. Okay, our skid poles are in position. Our chain is hooked. Our blocks are still set. We should be good. All right, K Dallas, stand up. One, two, three, four. There you go. Whoa. Four steps, y'all. Four pretty good steps. I'll get the log up on the wagon. And I don't know if y'all noticed it or not. Maybe on the next round. When that log comes up on the wagon, that stretcher will drop down. When it drops down, that means it's getting a little slack. You know, it's rolling faster than what they're pulling. And that means it's on the wagon. So that's what we want. So let's unhook the cross haul for now. And I'm going to leave them right there. Because we got another log to load. Whoa. We got to reset our cross haul chain. All right, there it comes. I'll just leave it right there for now. Bring our bed chains up, put it right there. Now, we just want to stretch it out over here like that. I'll make sure my skid pole stays up there on the wagon. All right. Now, now then this is a bigger log, so it'll go on the outside. And y'all, I'm by far not a, a pro with this wagon, not yet anyway. I learned a lot about it. My buddy Jeff, he's a, he is a jam up cross haul logger. He knows all about them. The good, the bad, the ugly, the all that good mess. So I, I've learned a lot from him. <clears throat> all right. So there's center. Let's hook a cross haul chain. 
I believe it'll be all right to let it, if it does walk downhill, that'll be all right. Matter of fact, I think I do want it to walk downhill just a little. All right, now. Now, we gotta undo our blocks. To do that, you just pull that chain up. Now I'm not gonna let it come all the way over. Not yet anyway. That ought to give it enough room if I let it come out to about the, the wheels. Let's see, that's going to swell toward the back, so I need to give it just a, a little more. Now, get the mules, and we'll cross all of that third one on. All right, back up. Back up. Back up, yeah. Yee, yeah, Kate. Back up. You. Yeah. Back. 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 Whoa. All right. Pull my slack out. Get my stretcher hook. Y'all watch that stretcher this time when it comes up. I'll count the steps and y'all watch the stretcher. That stretcher, when the log comes up on the bed, that stretcher will dip down. That's one way you know how it's up on the on the wagon. All right, here we go. Kate, okay, house. All right, one, two, three, four. Whoa, little bit, little bit. Whoa. All right, it didn't dip real hard, but that's mainly cause it it didn't roll across the bed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me show y'all what I'm talking about. You know, it didn't roll all the way across the bed. Uh, if it had rolled across the bed, it would have it would have done it. So anyway, let's get this block and put it on, and that's gonna hold our our logs on there. I'm gonna, gonna kind of set them to the outside a little. Now I gotta undo my. I gotta come off my cross haul chain before I can set them blocks. Oh, me. Back a little. Whoa. Whoa. All right. I got that one just a little too far forward. But they ain't, they ain't loaded too bad. Okay. For now. All right, let me put that block in, and it's on. All righty. Now, my cross haul chain has got to come up through here. It's got to come up in between them. It's got to come up in between them over the top to load our next. Uh, our next round of logs and on the back i've got another chain right here it will it comes up and over and then let's see i'm gonna say about right there we good we might need some more chain but maybe not okay now our skid poles, our skid poles have kind of got to go up on the side like this, and you want them to fit kind of tight. There's that. All right, now our next stack of logs, we'll be able to put two more up here. And the reason we was talking about having them, you know, spaced out, right, and all that good mess, and putting a smaller one in the middle. And that way they'll have somewhere to ride. And I'm gonna bring this one over just a little. That'll give us a little bit more room on the wagon. The logs will set in there a little better. Now. And 
go ahead and move this one over just a little. That'll, that'll be pretty good right there. We'll get it better situated whenever we load. Okay. So see what I'm saying now? We got two holes for two more logs to go. And you could put one up top if you wanted to. I ain't that good. Not yet anyway. I can do it with a skid loader. But I haven't tried it with the mules. It takes a lot more precision to get it on up top. Oh. Let me go ahead and do this while I'm here. I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. Take your axe. Stab it in there like that right there, y'all. That serves as a backstop for the log coming over the top. Just a little added, a little added help. All right, haul. Oh, whoop. All okay. cake. Alice Hall. Now I wish, y'all. I, I wish I had two cameras set up and I plan on getting a tripod for my phone to where I can video from two different angles. Well hope. Uh let's go this way. Oh. Sitting here running my mouth and don't know how to drive. Get over, haw. Oh. Stand up. Alright. Go ahead. Uh if I had a tripod, I could video from two different angles and things would do better. Go ahead, get in there. This ain't y'all's first day on the job. Alright, get in there. Stand up. Whoa. Whoa. That'll do. Whoa. Now, yeah, that'll do. Stand up, Kate. Uh -huh. Stand up. Stand up. Get your foot out of there. Whoa. That's how you got tangled up last time. Stand up. Now, whoa. Whoa. All right, back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Whoa. All right, so since my mules are on that side, and we're coming in kind of at a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna set my my tones. Y'all keep easing up now. I don't like that. Stand up now. Whoa, right there. I'm gonna set my tones over here, just like that, and they'll catch a lot better. All right, easy. Whoop. All right, now I come up. Whoa. Now one thing you don't want to do, y'all, is ever be on the downhill side of these logs because they can roll and they can roll right into you. <clears throat> All right, Kate Alice. Take her easy. Easy. Now haul. 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 Whoa. Now I believe this is a nine footer. And we gotta go up on top. So eh, that looks that looks pretty good. I might can squint them up just a tad. Give me just a little, Alice. Alice. Whoop! That'll do. Yeah, that's a nine foot tie. And it's gonna be a little more challenging cause the bunks are, you know, a lot of y'all ask me why I don't extend my bunks out. This is why, cause we have a lot of nine foot ties. And uh, if you extend your bunks out, uh, you'll get it too wide and you can't, you can't get these ties up on there. So maybe that answers some of y'all's questions. I hope y'all can make out what I'm doing with all this. <clears throat> all right, so there's that. 
Now let me get my cross halter in. Let's see now. Main thing is, I want to go up on there about even, so it ain't got no taper or nothing in it, so let's go right in the middle. Uh, I hope y'all have enjoyed this, and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Y'all take care, and God bless each and every one of you.